Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today, I'd like to welcome Reverend Gil Gaynor, the pastor of Lovejoy United Methodist Church in his hometown of Covington, Georgia. A Georgia native, Gil grew up very poor, but he won a scholarship at the University of Georgia where he won three SEC championships playing tennis. I didn't know they played tennis at University of Georgia, but evidently they do. Um, Gil graduated magna cum laude at the University of Georgia and then uh, earned a law degree at Mercer. He had a very successful law practice for over 35 years. We unfailingly defended the little guy, his many victories in some very large national cases. Now, I could talk about uh, Gil's very uh, many victories, but I'd like to talk instead about his love. First, his love for his family, his daughters, Tori and Emily, his wife of 27 years, Denise Gaynor. You want to stand up, Denise, for us? Thank you. Also, his love for his community, Gil was very instrumental in uh, helping and guiding former Representative Doug Holt of District 112, the seat I hold now. Doug Holt's with us today. Doug, you want to stand up? There you go. Uh, Gil is also very instrumental in my campaign. I would not be here if it was not for Representative Doug Holt and Reverend Gil Gaynor. So if you're looking for someone to blame, you can uh, blame these two uh, horse thieves for sending me up here, the village idiot from Morgan County. But I'd like to talk mostly about Gil's love and the sacrifice he made to leave a very successful law practice to follow the path that God has chosen for him. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my friend, my mentor, and my counselor, the Reverend Gil Gaynor. Good morning. Representative Felton, uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much for this opportunity, this privilege, uh, this honor to be in the People's House. I'd like to start this morning with a short scripture passage. It's short, but I think meaningful. If you would, please rise for the reading of our gospel. From the book of John, chapter 17, verses 20 through 23. Lord, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. I have given them the glory that you gave to me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may br be brought into complete unity with one another. You may be seated. Unity. That was the word and that was the message of Christ on that day to his disciples and to us on this day. Have you ever wondered why it is that from a very early age, truly from childhood, adolescence, on through adulthood, we seek connection with each other? We seek to establish meaningful relationships with each other? It's really quite simple. The reason we seek connection is because we are connected. We can thank our parents for our features, for our uh, traits, many other things. But that which is holy, that which is sacred, that which is precious in our Father's eyes came from one source, and that is our Father in heaven. We all share the same Father. We are brothers and sisters. And I don't mean that in a euphemistic way. I don't mean that in a figurative way. We are literally brothers and sisters. This is the season of Lent. And often we hear the phrase, from ashes to ashes and to dust to dust. That's true enough for our physical body. But where life began was not here. It began in heaven. Again, that which is precious and sacred and eternal came from God, God our Father. We share the same Father. We are one family. We are the children of God. 
So as we think about the work of the people that each of you do each day here, let's keep in mind, let's look through the lens of truth as to whom we are working with. If we see each other through that lens of truth of who we really are, brothers and sisters of the same family, children of God, from where we come and to where we will return, my brothers and sisters, that can change the world. And I am not too old nor too cynical to believe that we can change the world for the better. It is a matter of our hearts, it is a matter of our soul, it is a matter of our commitment to one another. This is a time of redemption, a time of reflection, and a time to remember who we are and to whom we belong. In this period of Lent, we have time for that reflection. But it should be each and every day that we recognize and remind ourselves who we are and to whom we belong. This is the people's house. Each of you have been called to serve the people of this great state, many of whom we have gathered right here in the gallery. Listen to one another. Be considerate of one another. Be respectful of one another. And at the end of the day, find common ground to do the common good of this great state. God bless each and every one of you. Let us rise and pray together. Lord, bless each and every member in this house today. Fill them with wisdom, patience, strength, and peace. Help us to remember, Lord, that we are truly brothers and sisters and to see each other through this lens of truth. Remind us this day of who we are and to whom we belong. We belong to you, Lord. We belong in your loving embrace. Let us linger there and help us to lead others to share in that embrace with us. Amen.